we've covered so so much um but we got some great viewer questions that came in via twitter that i would i'm actually really curious myself to hear some of the answers to these um kana a good friend of mine uh, at tribe asks why is brawl the only game that he can't play on wi-fi and that he needs to play on mobile data yeah it's an interesting question and um so it all starts with the fact that brawl tries to really give a great interactive experience with like very twitchy movements, fast movements, etc. So it requires a really low latency and uh, low rates of what's called packet packet drops. Uh, a packet drop is whenever one of these data packets travels somewhere else and it gets dropped from the line for whatever reason. Most people like happily play over Wi-Fi, but some Wi-Fi setups specifically um, are inferior to what's available on 3G, 4G, or now 5G. And this is because the mobile data solutions are routing people's traffic better than most Wi-Fi traffics. What is the your average Joe at home? Like, what is your main goal to do with the internet? To use this major search engine, which name I will not mention. <laughs> and it's, um, you watch, again, Netflix and stuff like this. So these are very specific tasks and most people are using the internet for that, not for gaming. So gaming networks are just working differently yeah, so that is that is one big reason there. There are so many different reasons why something might be off. Most of the time, we actually can't figure it out when we look at the individual case. It just doesn't scale, and it's not possibly to evaluate every single person's situation. Then, of course, there's the question, yeah, but why does it work for this other game? Again, it's hard to say which other game are you exactly talking about. There's a 100% chance that you have an easier time to play Clash Royale without the feeling of lag. Clash Royale... Uh, has significantly lower network requirements than Brawl Stars. Like the tolerance is like like 500 times as big as Brawl Stars. You cannot compare these titles. But if you're talking about some MOBAs on mobile phones or some first person shooters, a lot of these will use smoothing tech. It basically uh, interpolates the data. That's a complicated word. So uh, let's say you have two inputs. In Brawl Stars, we, we want to have these two inputs as tight together as possible. We try not to predict what would you have done in between too much. We want that it's your action. That why it feels so responsive and twitchy when it works. A lot of other providers, they put more tolerance there. Instead of every second signal, they only receive every fifth or every tenth. And then they fill the space in between with what they think you will do. For example, you're moving forward, they will just anticipate or you will keep moving forward. And what the client then tells you and shows you, that looks all very like uh, smooth or fast, but what happens on the server is a different story. Sometimes you play a, a first person tutor and you're, you're getting killed, even though you think, hey, there was no way I was visible for this guy. I was already behind the wall and so on and so forth. Your client shows you that you were behind the wall, but the server actually didn't think so because the server only had these two signals and they're too far from each other. So of course, and then there's slower games. Some of the MOBAs, they are by far not as twitchy. And this is the reason then, there's just more smoothing technology going on. We made a very conscious decision to not have that. Uh, there is some smoothing going on in browsers as well, but you will rarely feel that. It's just more tweaked towards feeling really this twitchy gameplay, which I'm sure you all experience out there. It has so many angles to this. It's <laughs> it's just crazy. I, I I mean, I knew some things. I had spoken to some of the server guys at some events and stuff, so I, I knew there was some really interesting things, but I never thought uh, there was so much going on, uh, to be completely honest. These topics are all much more complex than what I explained. Um, if you really would dig into that, if you if you just... You can just, again, go to this... to a major search platform, and you can <laughs> just look for smoothening in, in online games and first-person shooters or whatnot. And you will find articles and studies about this topic. It's really like it's so much more complex than what I make it sound now. And I'm already not giving short answers. And it makes you realize as well, like how skilled the people are that really know this stuff intimately. Like, I mean, this is like something which, you know, you, you don't study at school. You, there's no kind of like even a basic level of understanding. It's really kind of Deep, interesting stuff. Uh, Crying Man uh, had a question. Can the server be united? <laughs> I think I already know the answer to this one. <laughs> Unite the servers. Uh, <laughs> sounds beautiful, right? <laughs> Democracy. I should wear t-shirts with it as a slogan. <laughs> if 
there will be protests in front of the supercell office after this is done. Then, you know, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. There's there's no easy way of saying that, but no, it's not possible. But but pretty much what would happen if you just have servers in one place is that the people who are physically the closest to this place uh, would have a great connection, and everyone else would have a worse connection. It's technically just not possible. There's physical limitations, which, practically speaking, is today the speed of light. Uh, as, as humans, we haven't figured out a better way uh, to to handle data. So light is the fastest way we know today. And yeah, that's it. Maybe as new technologies evolve, there, m there might be other, other ways of handling data. But today, uh, we're stuck with speed of light. So that's a big fat note to that one, unfortunately, Cryoman. Sorry, buddy. But uh, the explanation does make a, a lot of sense. And this got a lot of questions uh, from Daniel. Uh, it says, we Iranian players have been having trouble connecting to the game for over a year now. What is the, the issues with regards to that? And, and kind of, is there anything in the works to kind of help support those, those problems that are happening there? It is unfortunately due to local regulations of service providers in the country, in Iran. Um, Iran filters the internet quite a lot. There's firewalls in place, there's packet inspections in place, etc. So actually we had issues with our previous games or other games as well. Like uh, for example, for days, Clash of Clans was not accessible and it, it just depending on the regulators what they want to do so they don't allow our, our data to go through and you can circumvent that with VPN but VPN is a neutral server somewhere else right so you're connecting to that neutral server and that server then connects to the game service so let's say you're in Iran and your VPN is in let's say Japan so then you're connecting to that VPN in Japan and then from there, it would have a pretty short way to the server, which is also in Japan. But of course, more likely you will pick something more accessible, maybe somewhere else in the peninsula. Like, so maybe you go to VPN in Egypt or like in, yeah, somewhere else. And then it still needs to make the jump from Egypt to likely then Germany. So it, it depends how good is your connection from Iran to Egypt, how well is the server handling that? And then how well does the data travel from Egypt to Germany. You will not have a good experience using a VPN. I mean, there might be some situations where a VPN will not have a big negative impact, but most of the time it will. And if you experience that a VPN gives you an advantage, that's coincidental and anecdotal. It's, it's technically just, it doesn't make sense. There are some countries where we don't have servers. We don't have servers in Africa, for example. And the reason is just that there's no major cloud provider. So even if we wanted to have servers there, we, we couldn't place servers there. And that is that is a whole issue. There's unfortunately nothing we can do there. I, I really like to hear those things, to have that knowledge of if we could, we would. And that's always been the way that I've come to know Supercell and how Supercellians think. A lot of the time, there's the want to do these things and kind of like, there's just simply physically no way of doing it. Um, hopefully that can kind of like help ease, not necessarily solve some of those problems, but let you know that if there was a way to do it, it would already be done. <laughs> An interesting fact, actually, the, the server engineer who, who built that infrastructure for Brawl Stars specifically, right? It was based on the infrastructure we had in place with the other games. The infrastructure for Brawl is much more elaborate than in our other games because there it was, they are asynchronous, right? It's very easy to have almost like an offline game experience uh, while still being able to, to communicate with other players. But it's very basic requirements at the end of the day. So Brawl Stars is the first time we venture in a different area. And this server engineer is crazy experienced. He's like, he's an old school guy. He worked for Nokia at a point. He was actually part of the team who developed SMS. So, so it's like, we're talking about real technical heavyweight there. And uh, yeah, he's a really amazing guy. Uh, it, it's funny that when he tries to talk to us, like a very <laughs> humble community guys, like we have no idea like what he's talking. That's why we brought Frank because Frank, I guess is a good uh, middleman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a good communicator to explain all this. Com very complex things. We want to bring obviously someone from the server team on as well, but please remember that like not everyone wants to be in the forefront of, of the kind of like you know the scene. Uh, many people are quite happy to remain in the background. But a um, uh, big shout out to the to the server team. I know who they are, but I'm not going to mention the names um, because uh, it's quite clearly apparent that like what you do is uh, incredibly experienced area. Um, also, uh, a massive thank you to you, Frank, uh, and to you, Danny, for joining us today to help kind of explain for a lot of these things because it's uh, really helped to kind of like digest a lot of it. So. 
Uh, do you want to sign off with anything at all? Anything you want to say? Any sneak peeks or information you want to win? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to try, haven't you? <laughs> well, thanks a lot for having us. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, of course, where I'm trying to stream once a week. And normally I'm interacting with the community quite a bit and try to explain things as well. And on my Twitter account, you will also find like stats all the freaking time. Oh. Or the the effing time? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> on your on your stream, just, Frank. And just make it feel sound. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, like we are not like providing a solution for the problems you are uh, bringing to us, but we are trying to like inform you that is a, a bit more complex. And many of the things you complain is like out of our power. Like we can't fix global internet. Maybe like this can guide people to go for the information like although it's a very long video <laughs> it's not enough to explain how complex it is yeah yeah exactly that even whilst we were recording this guys i was very surprised to see how long this was going on for because it clearly requires that much of an explanation but it's great to know that you guys are clearly listening to all that feedback and listening to people it's just something that you can't put in a tweet of 140 characters more like 140 minutes that i'm gonna be editing down for the next week or so <laughs> but guys that's gonna wrap things up i really hope you learned something new if you did leave a comment down below also check out the playlist i will leave a link in the description for that uh covers various topics for behind brawl stars from a ton of great content creators there so do check that out after watching this video and uh thank you danny thank you frank for your time and we'll see you guys in the next one Thank you. Bye-bye.